Okay, Coach, Head Coach Jay Vidovich is going to open up with a statement. Go. All right, gentlemen, uh, once again, uh, tremendous effort by the guys today. They, uh, they fought when they had to fight. They played when they could play and uh, found the back of the net. They just found a way uh, to get a result. Very proud of them. Uh, they said, I, I think we did a, a great job of taking our opportunities and controlling the match, managing it. And uh, just some uh, exceptional goals there. The first one with, uh, with Val and uh, second with uh, Bertan and, uh, and Belko. Just, uh, just tremendous individual efforts there. So just uh, very proud of the guys and look forward to the opportunity to compete at the semifinal. <clears throat> Hey, you've been there before. What can you tell your guys about uh, getting this far along in, in, in a tournament? I think it's the same thing we told them today. It's like the further you go, the pressure is greater, the rewards are greater, the pain is greater, um, the margin for mistakes are greater. So, uh, you know, and I think they got on the right side of that today, you know, where they, uh, they, they executed and, and found the, uh, the back of net when they needed to, and they defended their rear ends off uh, at other times. So, yeah, I think just the, the margin of error is, is there and uh, we've been preparing for it, so we'll be ready. Yeah, you mentioned that defending. I mean, after the opening goal, you guys were defending like crazy in your own box. Nico made a few big saves, a lot of clearances. Uh, you know, kind of how impressed were you with that resilience in defense uh, after the opening goal? It's great. Um, to be honest with you, and I thought at the you know, last bit of the game, and I thought that was even more so in the, in the end of the game. They were throwing the kitchen sink at us. You know, it's off to Washington. They always find a way to win, and uh, they make it very difficult. They play off your mistakes. They're very committed to uh, making a scramble in the box and, and, and finding their opportunities. So I thought our guys were exceptional, really. You know, in, in those difficult times, they they stepped up from the goalkeeper to, you know, people getting blocks, defenders making headers, just to, Great job, great job by our guys, and it's and that certainly is not easy. You can see why Washington, you know, made it as far as they did. Jay, what's the mood and the mindset like around the team right now? It's obviously a huge accomplishment, um, you know, uh, uh, for any program. It's Pitt's first Final Four team of any kind since nineteen since uh, since uh, nineteen forty one. But obviously, there are still bigger goals left. Um, yeah, what sort of the mood? Um, you know, I think it's probably pretty uh, jubilant, but what's everything like around the team right now? I think we're pretty focused. I mean, you know, when we were talking to the guys today, we said, listen, we, we've worked a, a year basically as a group to to get to this stage. And now when once you get an NCAA tournament, where we're at, well, we were halfway there. We'd only done half our work, right? First round, second round, third round. Now, uh, today, today's result there close to where we really want to be and it's been difficult and now we're, we're, we're much closer um so they're they're pretty business-like yeah they're excited uh they know they fought they, they knew that they uh had to earn that win and uh yeah they feel pretty good about it they're exhausted and uh, i think they already know that uh, they're already preparing for not only hopefully just you know for a semifinal, but just uh you know, that the that the possibility that uh, we may have two matches in, in several days here. Uh, Coach, you guys got a lot of production from a lot of your bigger guys today, like Noel and Petkovic, these guys who have kind of contributed a lot all year. What do you have to say about guys like Luke Moore, who kind of came off the bench and had a pretty uh, pretty dramatic impact? He created a couple of scoring opportunities towards the end. So do you think that kind of depth element of your team is something that you guys can sort of build off of the rest of the way in the tournament? Sure, it's something we've been discussing, you know, over the last month and a half, you know, or two. Um, how crucial those guys have been to our, our play. It's helped us get through injuries. It's helped us get through uh, uh, red card suspensions. Uh, COVID uh, is that these guys have been training all year and have uh, been known to step up. Uh, very proud of Luke and Pep and, and Matt Bailey. Uh, they, they did a tremendous job when they jumped on, you know, when they came in, Brandon Claggett at the end, they knew their job and their responsibility. So, yes, uh, uh, you know, Luke did a great job pressing out. That's what his job has been. And, uh, you know, he almost got himself a goal when Matt Bailey turned the corner and put him in. He did, it 
way he attacked the box, the box was uh, impressive. So uh, would have loved for him to find one, but uh, you know he's been very consistent performer. Like uh, all those guys I just mentioned, uh, you know, coming in have been consistent. So it was uh, Rodrigo de Almeida who almost went in, but I, I made a different tactical move. Jay, um, Camposano seemed especially aggressive in the box today. Is that the way he normally plays, or did he just step up his game because of the situation? Um, both, both. He's been very, very sound for us. Um, we played a couple of teams like this, you know, in the spring and fall, in particular, like a, a Virginia Tech and and uh, in Notre Dame, the first time where they're, they're putting a lot of balls in on us and uh, trying to play off our mistakes. And uh, he's been fantastic, both, you know, every time he's been called to and, and, and playing the game that way. So, yes, he. Made some big saves. He uh, handled the air balls there that they were uh, throwing in on him, and uh, you know, they were doing a lot of work to box him out of uh, being able to make plays on. Him. He just fought his way through it. So yeah, he, he had a tremendous, uh, tremendous match. <clears throat> hey, what was the uh, what was the message at halftime? And uh, did you guys feel like maybe you could have been up uh, one 0 at that point? Um, the, the message. The message was that um, that it's there for us for the taking enough moments where we could get at them. That I, I thought that um, that we could get we had to get stronger and more intense, more assertive in in the match, and in different ways that uh, we had to focus on what we could control and what we couldn't control. Well, uh, we can make the game you know tighter and more compact defensively. And I thought there were going to be some opportunities to find our spaces where we could play and uh, and find a goal chance. So it was just that we had to be more assertive, push that the game was there for us. Uh, that the you know at the start of the match, that the, the second half, it was going to be a key opportunity for us. And I think after the first uh, minute, we we certainly raised you know right, in our game, they picked it up and uh, and created some opportunities there. Anything else for coach? What's your Jay, message? Um, I don't know if you. Oh. I'm sorry. What's your message for the rest of the week for how these guys can? I mean, you don't play till Friday night. That's a long time. Yeah, I'm. Well, it's not a long time. For us. We're kind of beat up, and you know, emotionally, physically, uh, it's been a long time on the road in, in the bubble. Um, it, it's what we've been talking about. I was, you know. Very fortunate this uh, during the COVID period, a lot of my guys who had won MLS Cup and uh, you know cups and NCAA tournament championships like that, had an opportunity to share a lot of different wisdom with them. And I think the biggest one was at the moment you finish one game, you're already preparing for the next one. So the guys are right now trying to, after the heat and battle of the game, trying to eat right now and they'll uh, take care of themselves treatment wise, get in the pool and do everything possible to recover and regenerate, you know, for the next match. Uh, they know that they'll be training tomorrow and that we'll already start introducing ways to improve what we did today, as well as uh, the game plan for, you know, whatever opponent we have. So they're pretty focused on that. They like said, we've been working on this uh, you know, since uh, August and, and the mindset that, uh, that this is where we wanted to be. We didn't, we weren't sure we we're going to get here, um, but, uh, this is the way, you know, I think everybody's always asked me, you know, well, did you think you could do this? I'm not sure if I thought I could do this, but I, I, I've told you that we could run as a championship program. And that's the way the guys have handled it. And that's where we're going at it. Jay, I, I apologize if you've been asked this already. I'm sorry, I just joined, joined on a little late. But um, just Nico, in terms of Nico's performance, and a lot of balls that were coming in high. Um, you know, I know you kind of knew that going in the type of team this was you were going to play, but just if you can just kind of give me your thoughts on his his performance and the, the way you guys defended in the second half as a team. Yeah, it was. I mean, Nico was was huge today um, in every which way coming off his line, you know, getting the balls. You know, his air game was fantastic. He, he made two at least two. I, I mean, I'm spinning right now, but it's uh, made two critical, you know, saves there that were tremendous. He managed the game. He decided when to build and when not to build. So uh, he, he was fantastic. And as you said, you know, the whole team's bought into it. 
Uh, I think that got it better in the second half. Uh, we were pressing better in, in the second half, and that goes back to I think it was Zach who brought it up that uh, you know, Luke Mords and Peps and uh, and Matt Bailey's did a fantastic job of putting pressure on their backs. It it, it dropped down when they couldn't sustain it, but uh, they were they played they were very influential in terms of putting them under pressure. Jay, I, yeah. I think this is your fifth college cup. Um, how, if at all, does this one feel different? You know, it, it, it's obviously happening at a different school, a different program, but how, if at all, does it feel different than, than some of the other ones? You have? Well, um, I think you feel the same emotional, you know, pride. And uh, when you look at your guys and you know how much they put into it, I think it, what's made it special is, uh, where we were five years ago, uh, the people were, you know, as West Virginia would say, shitting on pit, and uh, that we we pulled it out of that. I think that um, when I look at it, I have a lot of guys who are like the bad news bears who weren't wanted by other people, and uh, we got it done. So very, very, I'm like almost emotionally proud of the of the guys in terms of you know what they've accomplished. In, in the toughest league in, in the country and what they did during the fall and the spring and, you know, dealing with it during the COVID time. I'm just uh, tremendously proud. And I think that makes it different as well. But uh, I, I, all, all the times I've been, I've enjoyed it. My kids have always been special. They're guy, I mean, I can't tell, you know, one guy got in the car this morning and drove from uh, last night in, from Miami to be back and, and just support me. Of course, he gets to see Wake Forest now, but um he was at the game with his kids. So it was, uh, you know, that's the type of, you know, you get that kind of bond from something like this. And these guys will be special for me, you know, all along. I was one of your Wake Forest players from years back? Yeah, there's a bunch of them here. You know, they'll, they'll all be out here. But uh, yeah, one of my Wake guys came on in and uh, he's, he's actually his grandfather, you know, is from the, just north of Pittsburgh. So he wears all his Steelers gear when he and his family visit, you know, come on back. But yeah, they, uh, we have a lot of the guys there who support us and have been to a lot of our games, uh, you know, and down the line, like I said, they spent time with the guys over the summer, you know, explaining, you know, letting them know what a championship locker room was all about. And so I think it's those kind of bonds you get that, you know, coming, going this far through this much that, that makes it special. Um, that it, maybe that we're the bad news bears uh, make, and probably most of you guys are too young to know who they are, but um, we're kind of like the, the, the island of misfits and uh, we got it done. And it, it wouldn't be um, more poetic than to have two wonder goals at the end there. Uh, is exactly how you drew those up, Jay? No, no. Um, I did, yeah, um, actually someday you got to ask, what I always tell Berton, I, I know about six words in French and it, it's past tier push, whatever goal. And uh, he did all three of them on that one. And then Velko's vision. Uh, I don't know where it was when he made, when he came off the pitch and he saw where the keeper would have been up so high or if he did it spur. Went, but those things, you, you know, usually I think if you look at Pitt, we've got more team goals, like our first goal, but those were just individual acts of brilliance that at this level, I mean, you know, when you get to these level, uh, situations, that's what opens up games. And, uh, hey, that was heads up. That was nothing drawn up. They uh, just uh, I got some footballers. All right. Nothing else. Anything else for you, gentlemen? Just think. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say I, I it was the question was kind of asked earlier in terms of preparation. Um, obviously, Indiana, Seton Hall, any thoughts, initial thoughts on, you know, one of those two or both those teams? Um, I have not seen Seton Hall. I, I don't know much about them at all. Um, I saw Indiana for a little bit the other day uh, in person against Milwaukee. Um, uh, they're both, you know, they're both one of those teams are going to make it to the final four. So we all know that they're battle ready and they're, they're quality teams. They both, you know, uh, Indiana was uh, flat out champions and then uh, Big Ten champions, before, you know, after that at the tournament. So they've been winning and doing, you know, doing it up. They had to come from behind against Milwaukee. So I know that much. 
and Seton Hall's here for, for a reason. Uh, I understand that they can play, that they've got a little bit of uh, similar to our team with, uh, you know, a, a uh, international flavor and the maturity about them that uh, makes them very, very difficult to play. But I, I honestly have not seen them play yet. Uh, that's what I'll be doing here at five. All right. Thanks, Jay. Congratulations. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Really appreciate your coverage and support of uh, Pitt Soccer. I do have to say, Thank though, Jay, there was a Bad News Bears remake that came out in 2005, so I'm very familiar. Yeah, okay, so I, I, don't, I didn't even know that there was a remake. I'm going back to, I can't even remember who it was. Uh, I don't even when that went, but it was probably in the 70s. Yeah, it's yeah. Like how old this old man is. <laughs> So we did get the reference. So although I think Jerry's a little bit too young to get it. So that's damn. Uh, I'll send you <laughs> no a, I'll send your link on YouTube. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. All thanks, Jake. Guys. Good luck to Take you, care. Coach. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Take care. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, man.